Good afternoon. Climate change has recently brought, been brought into sharp focus with the UN climate talks in Paris and the climate action marches around the globe. Buildings play a highly significant role in energy use and energy use in buildings has to be at the forefront of our thinking. Today, all developed societies are dependent on energy. The planet's resources are finite, the world's population is growing beyond sustainable levels and the buildings we live and work in gobble energy in order to keep us comfortable. We need buildings that use less energy, but unlike previous generations, we can no longer expect or rely on a never-ending source of fossil fuels. We have to change to survive. Virtually every aspect of a building's design, construction and services has an effect on its energy consumption. And buildings account for the largest proportion of UK energy consumption. We have to build sustainably in response to our environment and the needs of the people without compromising the needs of future generations. Now, whilst there is no single blueprint for the perfect green building, you can design out the need for a lot of services which consume a lot of energy by how you use the site and its characteristics, the materials you construct the building from and how you use the building itself. Firstly, the site. A building's orientation, which way it faces in relation to the sun, is an important consideration. The light and heat from the sun are powerful allies and can help us to cut energy costs for heating and lighting. But it can also cause overheating. Proximity to trees can provide shading and they can also provide some shelter from prevailing weather. Secondly, the shape of the building and also what it's made of. A narrow building will allow light to penetrate into its centre and a building with tall to fl floor to ceiling heights will allow heat and air to circulate freely. Heavyweight materials such as stone and concrete will act a bit like storage heaters. They have a thermal mass and they will absorb and release heat slowly so they can help smooth out any temperature changes and create a comfortable space and thereby reduce fuel usage. However, this process is slow to work. A building which has thick heavy masonry walls will take longer and use up more energy to heat than a building constructed of lightweight uh, materials uh, that are insulated. To keep the heat in a building, we need to insulate it well and avoid drafts, a bit like a well-fitting coat in the winter. And fourthly, the use of responsive and efficient services. But finally, and most importantly, the way people actually use the building, such as opening windows when it's hot, closing them when it's too cold. There are many factors to consider. A lot of them contradict each other, and so a balance is always needed. These are considerations that can be given to the design of any building. So is it possible to build sustainably on a small island? Well, yes, we can. And we did this on the Department of the Environment, Food and Agriculture's HQ at St. John's, on which I was fortunate to be design and project architect whilst I was working at APA Architects. This is the first corporate government building outside of Douglas, and it's unique on the island. There's nothing of this size designed in a sustainable way. It is the first and only building to be awarded an excellent rating under BRIAM, and in 2012, at the Green Apple Awards, it won a gold award and then went on to become the overall winner. Any project starts with the client in this case, the Isle of Man government. Ultimately, this project relied on the informed enthusiasm of the client, and their key requirement was for a sustainable building capable of substantial energy savings. Now, every site is different, presenting the designer with a different set of constraints and opportunities. The principles that I've outlined earlier, 
should act as guidance, and decisions are often interrelated and compromises sometimes have to be made. The deficit is relatively long and narrow, lending itself to a narrow building. This, combined with the relatively high ceilings that we designed, allowed light and to uh, circulate quite freely and natural ventilation to occur. Research has shown that access to daylight has a profound effect on health and well-being and also productivity. This shape was then capped by a curved roof which is reminiscent of agricultural barns. The building was located on the footprint of the rundown workshops, thereby minimising any impact on the landscape. It also meant that we could recycle some of the materials from the workshops into the new building. But the main plus point of building the building here was that it was immediately adjacent to the trees and river, and I wanted to create a place of work that connected to the landscape. To strengthen this connection, we introduced large expanses of glass. In the staff common room, for example, you feel like you're sitting up in the canopy of trees. A muted colour scheme internally adds to the feeling of calmness and emphasises the connection with the outside. The orientation of the building is important. The main elevation of DEFA faces southwest, not absolutely ideal, um, but it did mean that we could take um, advantage of solar gain. But it also meant that we had to have overhangs on the roof to provide some shading. These overhangs, however, do allow the low winter sun in to provide natural daylight. The landscape, particularly the trees, are reflected in the structure of the building, together with the choice of natural materials. So you see the trees come down off of the hill into the parkland, and then they are manifested by glue lamb timber columns, which carry on both along the facade of the building and actually within the building itself. These columns enable the building to be raised on stilts, so it avoids flooding and also it has a light touch on the landscape. The space requirements of the client, however, meant that in some areas, a deeper plan was necessary. The shape of this single-storey accommodation was influenced by a wildlife corridor alongside the river and the position of existing trees. With a sloping green roof, the connection with the landscape for the staff up on the first floor became much more immediate. Natural daylight in these areas is provided by roof lights, together with a central double-height atrium. This atrium fulfils a number of important roles. It divides individual offices from large open plan spaces and it also allows constant light to cascade into the centre of the building. Heat and fresh air are able to circulate freely and you've got opening roof lights at the top to let the warm air out. To keep the heat in, the building is thickly insulated and drafts are minimised. The external walls, for example, are constructed of timber panels filled with fibres from recycled newspapers. This is, by its nature, lightweight, so we needed to introduce materials right into the heart of the building that would act to store heat. The first and most visible of these is the atrium. This is thick, ripples along its length, and is constructed of hempcrete. This is a natural material and it's made of the inner woody core of the hemp plant, and it's mixed with a lime-based binder. The second element is the first floor concrete slabs, and these are left exposed on their underside. The choice of building materials was therefore key. Over 80% were responsibly resourced, and the use of concrete was kept to a minimum. All this careful consideration enabled us to reduce the need for energy guzzling services, but some are still required. A biomass boiler sited at the adjacent sawmills uh, heats all of the buildings on the DEFA site, not just the HQ, and it uses waste sawdust and wood chips from the mill. 
the DEFA HQ cost approximately 10 to 15% more than a building of similar size, standard construction and air conditioned. But in DEFA, the annual heating use is less than 50% of typical offices. And when you combine this with the use of the wood chip boiler, it means that the offices cost one quarter as much to heat as a typical office of equivalent size. Similarly, electricity usage is 50%. Calculations done at feasibility stage indicated a 10 to 15 year payback period. But DEFA is not only a building that provides substantial cost savings. The effect of all the strategies employed result in a different type of space. The building has a calm atmosphere. DEFA, however, was completed six years ago. And whilst people's aspirations are changing, there are occasional houses in both the public and private sector that have eco-credentials, some passive houses, Initially, the capital outlay is more expensive than standard construction, and this acts as a deterrent to people. But really, the overall picture has to be considered, and whole life costings and payback periods given consideration. The elephant in the room, however, is that living on a small island, there is no escaping the fact that the majority of materials, albeit responsibly resourced and capable of being recycled, have to be imported. Ideally, I would have liked to have used timber from the adjacent sawmills. At the time, partly given time constraints, but also really the quality of the timber available, it wasn't possible. Today, things have changed. With the current management uh, occurring in our forestry, larch, which we imported and used for wall cladding on the HQ, is now being harvested. DEFA are looking to become accredited by the Forestry Stewardship Council and are increasingly planting more hardwoods, which will in time provide good timber for construction. Since completing the project, I have set up my own practice with another local architect. And in February, we celebrate five years of being in business. We have a strong belief in the value and benefits of good, modern, sustainable design, which underpins our approach, and we try to carry through in all of our projects. We have the knowledge to make better use of our natural resources. We can turn around from our consumerist and throwaway society and incorporate sustainable measures into all new and existing buildings. In the 21st century, good buildings should use resources to make and run themselves frugally. Architecture should be sustainable and it should be responsible. But it is also about well-being. Buildings are really about people. The thing I am most proud of at the DEFA HQ is not the awards or the statistics, but that people really enjoy working there and turn up to work early to have their breakfast in the staff common room while they look out amongst the trees.